All right, we are unmuted and it's six o'clock. All right, thank you, Mr. Manager. Then I will call to order the Riverside City Council meeting for Thursday, June 15th, 2023. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Mr. Denning? Here. Mrs. Franklin? Ms. Fry? Here. Mr. Joseph? Yes. Ms. Lomatch? Yes. Mr. Maxfield? Present. Mayor Williams? Here. Motion to excuse. Second. We have a motion for Mr. Maxfield and a second Mr. Joseph to excuse Ms. Franklin. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Mr. Manager, any additions or corrections to the agenda as presented? No, Mr. Mayor. We move to approve. Second. We have a motion from the Deputy Mayor and a second from Mr. Maxfield to approve the agenda as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Agenda is approved. If you would please all join me at this time to rise and pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you, folks. At our last regular meeting, in the beginning of June, earlier in June, we had the chance to recognize and meet uh, some really outstanding students that were finishing up high school in our city and going off to conquer the world. And we missed one, but we had a good reason because that young man was in Columbus that night because he was running in the state championship the next morning or the next afternoon, I should say, in the 800 meters, 800 meter dash and uh, did very well in that. I'll let him tell that part. But if uh, if Seth Trevacheran could come up to the podium, please. I didn't tell you there was a speaking role, did I? I told your father this. So we're going to do a proclamation for Seth. Um, he is a senior from Carroll High School, and um, he was one of the two valedictorians. And I will go ahead with our proclamation, and then we'll you know we'll start our Q and A. There's not much. To, just relax. <laughs> I'm I'm making this up to be more than it is, just to see if I can catch you a little bit on your toes. So. The city of Riverside, Ohio is proclaiming a, is, a, is proclaiming honor, a proclamation honoring Seth Tavakarin, recognition of academic excellence, whereas Mr. Seth Tavakarin of Beaver Creek, Ohio, has completed the prescribed course of study as outlined by the Archdiocese of Cincinnati to graduate from Archbishop Carroll High School, and whereas Mr. Tavakarin has distinguished himself as an exemplary student, receiving the Ohio High School Athletic Association Scholar Athlete Award, along with the Academic Award for Excellence in Science, and finishing in the top four in the 800 meters. And whereas Mr. Tavakarin <clears throat> has been named valedictorian for the class of 2023 at Archbishop Carroll High School. Now, therefore, I, Peter J. Williams, mayor of the city of Riverside, Ohio, and the city council do hereby recognize Mr. Seth Tavakarin on the occasion of graduation and wish you the very best in your future. Signed on this 15th day of June, 2023, under my hand. Seth, congratulations, and thank you for making time, and obviously for your family for making time this evening. Um, we know you were really busy two weeks ago, um, but thanks for being here tonight. What we did last time was we asked the, uh, the valedictorians a few questions. So what are your plans for this fall? Uh, this fall, I will be attending uh, Case Western University in Cleveland. Um, I'll be studying biology on the pre-med track through their um, dual degree program with Case Western Medical School. And I'll, I'll brag on this young man for a moment because I've gotten to know him the last several years. You've essentially already been admitted to Case Western's med school. Is that correct? Correct. So what an accomplishment. Congratulations on that. I'd also point out that now all four of the young people that we had come in are going to college in Ohio. So we're, we have these great kids that have gotten a great education in our community. They're going to stay in the Buckeye State. Um, I don't know where life's going to take the four of you after that, but we're so happy that you will be starting your next, the next step of your journey um, in Cleveland at Case. And obviously we know you'll do well. And we, uh, could you introduce who's here with us? Or who's here with you tonight? Of course, yeah. So I have my, um, my dad, as you guys met earlier, um, my younger brother, Neil, he's gonna be, uh, he's a rising senior. And then my mom. All right, thank you for joining us tonight. I was talking to your father before you walked in that it was a great corollary that the two young men from Stebbins had been on multiple sports teams together and that um, so many of the valedictorians from the last few years, including this year at Carroll, are part of the running community. So um, what would you say about the track and cross country programs at Carroll that you come from? Yeah, I was very involved with um, 
the cross country team, indoor track team, and outdoor track team all through high school. I had started running um, ever since I was like fifth, sixth grade. I started track when I was a second grader. And the program itself, the coaches, it's very supportive. Um, they really um, encourage kids to stay diligent. It fosters a lot of discipline in athletes. And I think that really translates to academics. Wonderful. Well, I've asked all the questions before we give this young man his proclamation and let his, his mom take all the pictures she wants to. Does anybody else have anything for Seth before we hand this over? Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks all right. What, what type of medicine do you want to practice? Um, I'm just looking to explore for the okay. next eight years. Exploratory surgery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Well, thank Great you so topic. much for having me. So come up here and stand with this in the background. We still got Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see you here next year, right? <laughs> so, 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 how did you how did you do at the state competition? Excellent. Wow. He had a wonderful running career. Cross country team was second in the state in fall. He went to fourth in the state as a senior. So, and they ran past the my house, house all the time. They put it, you guys run through it. And they're not good. And so, you don't see you guys and try not to get too far. Then you get your water break down at the corner. Yeah, uh, at the bottom of the hill. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 Thank you, Thank you guys. Have a good evening. Much more excited. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, folks. We'll move right into the next part of our agenda. I think we've all had a chance to look at the meeting minutes from the June first council meeting. Approved, approved. Second. We have a motion for Mr. Joseph and a second, Mr. Maxfield, to approve the minutes as published. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. If there are any anyone else joining us tonight in council. I'm sorry, in council chambers, we do accept citizen petitions. You could fill out a form in the back and turn it into the clerk. We'll accept petitions for both agenda and non-agenda items, should anyone wish to speak. We'll move right into a department updates and I'll hand it over to the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And we will start in the police department. Uh, we'll excuse Chief Robinson tonight. We have Major Jackson with us. So I'll turn it over to Major Jackson for an update. Can I start by saying how nice it is to have a full house here? Yes, that's nice. what we're here for. See mm -hmm. all of their smiling faces and their happy news. I, uh, thank you for having me tonight. Um, so on our personal update, um, we will be making an offer to uh, a new candidate um, in the that's been in the process. Um, we also like still have two openings, so we started searching again. Um, Newton, um, Officer Newton, who was in solo, uh, just started solo patrol this um, today's third Wednesday. Um, he's doing great. Um, took him a little bit to get through. Um, it was new and fast for him from coming to the hospital, but um, I just got off the road with him, and he's he's doing very well. Um, we also have our plot cameras are up. We have access to about a thousand cameras so far from all the agencies across the nation, opening them up. And I know that might seem like a excessive, but when you're tracking theft rings and stolen cars and crimes, um, it's very helpful to see what patterns they're going through. Unfortunately, I'm just sitting here, I got an alert that we had a stolen car go down Springfield Street. So um, we missed that one, but it's okay. Um, 
We had a great turnout on June 7th at Seville with uh, popsicles and cops. Um, uh, they had uh, chalk drawings and stuff, and it was really nice to see everybody there. We also had snow cones with cops last night at Brant, um, Brantwood, and I believe around 100 snow cones went out, and they seemed to have a nice turnout. There. Great. Questions for the major? Major, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I heard a rumor that the flock cameras had already helped us solve a crime. Are you familiar with that? Yes, actually, it's helped us solve a couple. So we had an aggravated robbery, um, and we we had a language barrier, but as soon as we got up on what the plate was and what the vehicle was, we were able to um, track it through the flock. We got it in Huber Heights and got two arrested. Um, so... Another is a like a TPO violation where um, the violator kept going by the house and we were able to track that. Yeah, we got the pattern that they were going. So it has been very helpful. We appreciate that we were allowed to put them in, but they they are a big asset. Awesome. Wonderful update. Thank you. That's not every conjecture into the city, right? It's like any entrance point to the city we have those in. We, balance with um, Dayton. So if they had one, we didn't double it up. So if it was northbound for Dayton, we took the southbound. Um, so we were just trying to utilize as much camera as we could without compounding it too much. So um, FLOC was, uh, the FLOC safety team was very helpful in mapping that out for us. Um, they did make some suggestions. We did move due to, we knew where our higher crime was. So we moved some cameras. If we get to do some extensions, that'd be great at some point um, to cover a little bit more areas. But yeah, we we balanced uh, entrances front into the city as best as we can. Okay, perfect. So those are those are what I see like at the entrance ramp to Harshman from Springfield Street. It's just the pole with the solar panel and and looks probably a camera on it. And so that that's amazing technology when you, we don't have to actually put power, yes. get power to them. Some of them we were not as fortunate to. We had to hardwire them, um, but um, road guys were helpful in getting that done. Um, it was a little harder up at the construction area. There wasn't any power. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was harder. <laughs> so we got that taken care of. But um, it's quite painless to get it done. It was more implementing, hey, where do we want to do this? And what's our best okay. avenues for these things? Technology is a wonderful yeah. thing. Yeah, it's an absolutely instrumental tool, I think, for us and uh, something that we've definitely seen dividends from even in the process of getting them installed. So a huge, a huge help fighting crime for our community. So okay. that's a huge shout out to you, Major Jackson, and to Chief and you, Josh to coordinate this because I mean I, I'm sure your team is loving these because it's a it sounds like a really existential tool that they have that they can see things that they normally wouldn't before they can it monitor does it does help <laughs> and it was paid for by a grant correct right. yep so big shout out to chief yep. and everyone for getting that acquired yeah major sturgeon worked hard on uh, the grant and getting the funds, um, so we worked hard. Wonderful. Anything else for the major? Well, thank you, Major Jackson. We certainly appreciate you joining us this evening. Some might even call it an upgrade. I don't know. We'll move right back to the city manager. <laughs> we'll move right back. You you have, you have order, order in the question. <laughs> Go ahead and clip that out and share it. <laughs> hey, I'm loving it. <laughs> Resounding endorsement. Uh, Back well, to the city manager. I appreciate it's it. The, I'm tossing you the hot potato. We'll turn it over to <laughs> Interim Chief Taylor in the fi fire department. I almost said finance, Tom. Uh-oh. In the fire department uh, <laughs> Thank you. for an update there. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Um, Council, I appreciate the opportunity um, to be here this evening. Most of what I'm going to talk to you about is will be in your updates uh, that you, you'll receive from the city manager. <laughs> but uh, for the week, this week, we've uh, at, we've had about 103 runs averaging about 15 runs a day. So we're, we're staying very busy um, as far as things go. Um, for the year so far, as of when I typed this this afternoon, and that's increased already, uh, we've had 2,329 runs 
uh, to date. So we're, we're averaging about 14 runs a day. We're on pace for over 5,000 runs this year um, as a department. So we're very, very busy. Uh, we remain very busy. Um, we continue to utilize the Airway Roadhouse that you guys have seen. Well, we've been doing some training at that. Um, we continue to utilize that at this point. Uh, very happy to have that house. Thank you, Naya, for um, pointing me in the right direction and, and getting uh, us access to that house. We've been doing uh, some um, smoke training and, and some scenario training and things like that for our members. It's very valuable to have that sort of uh, place to have training. And we definitely appreciate the opportunity to use it. Thank you, Naya, again, for pointing me in the direction to get, get use of the house. So um, we will be conducting full-time interviews on the 27th of this month. Uh, we've had, we closed applications this past Monday. Uh, we've had 12 total applications. We will be interviewing 10 um, candidates. Um, about half of them are fully qualified firefighter paramedics. The other half um, are uh, in medic school. So we'll be interviewing a, a range of, of different candidates to be excluded for various reasons. But um, we will be interviewing about 10 candidates here in the next couple of weeks and hopefully have our two vacancies uh, fulfilled and then have a list moving forward for uh, any potential uh, vacancies or additions that we may have uh, with safe grants and things like that. So, um, that's all I have for this evening, unless you guys have questions for me. Any questions? No, I just, uh, I like what's been out on Facebook about the training, but maybe we need to put that out again. Sure. So people are asking questions about what's going on on airway. Yeah. yeah we so, get the, the one, the one group is pretty active on Facebook. We get a lot of comments from them and, right. uh, you know, they, well, let's just blast it out again sure. and let people I will have, uh, be aware. Next week we'll put something out probably on Tuesday, but we'll, we'll get something out. Thanks. Kind of keep that in there. In the front of you. Glad to see we had a number of qualified candidates. Yeah, yes. been... it was, it's been a while since we've been able to get that many applicants. So yeah. I'm pretty excited about it. Is the pool for police still pretty low right now as far as applicants things? Yeah. I hope we can see an increase there. So yeah, we've pushed the recruiting pretty hard. So we're gonna keep doing it. Hopefully we'll continue to get good outcomes. All right. Well, we certainly appreciate that, and we certainly appreciate everything that our public safety officials do for our city, and it's very apparent this time of year. <clears throat> And we uh, continue to thank you at every chance we get. And Chief Robinson, who's not here. <laughs> Moving back to the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll turn it over to Ms. Bartlett in public service. Good evening. The service department is currently interviewing for full-time and part-time workers. We have not been successful to date. Um, I met with MKSK and Crawford Murphy and Tilly, CMT as they're known by, uh, on the Woodman US 35 landscaping grant application. We're going to potentially submit an application to MVRPC in October, and I'll be bringing forth a presentation in August uh, to the work session. I also attended the Harshman Beatrice and the Harshman Valley Intersection Improvement Project Scope meeting with ODOT and CMT. The design is starting on those two intersections soon, and those will not be bid and constructed until July of 2025. Uh, ODOT is paying 100% of the design and the construction. When we submitted our grant application, we were going to be, we were supposed to pay for the design, but they worked it out that they got more safety funds. So we, that's about $100,000 that they picked up. Today, we met with Clemens Nelson about CWA negotiations. This is the start. Uh, our contract with the guys are up in October and we're just starting to get things together. We're putting together two grant applications each for community development block grants and Montgomery County Solid Waste District recycle grants for toddler play structures in rural and community parks. And to go through some projects, the Olin Tangier Bridge replacement is about finished. The airway bridge replacement started, as you know. 
Uh, Springfield Street is coming along. It's, they're working right now around North Cliff. There were some issues at North Cliff that has taken a little longer than we anticipated, but I think the project's still on schedule. And the crews pulled up all 215 temporary no parking signs installed for the St. Helens Festival. And today and tomorrow they'll be mowing the parks and the cemetery. And that's it. All right. Questions for Ms. Bartlett. So I want to thank you for applying for, I had asked her to look into some enhancements to the 35 Woodman intersection when they get the road part done, because as you're all aware, a lot of the cities have really pretty entryways. And so to try to get some help so we can have a grant to enhance and MVRPC can help with that, but you gotta ask for it. So nothing about what it'll be, but it was just hope we can get some money to make our entryway as nice as others. And I know that's been a concern that we've heard from residents as well. Um, I think the next step in our process is, again, just to be sure we have enough to bring to the table for a local match and figure out what the scope of that is and then bake all that into our grant requests. And so we'll continue to work on that and then bring you something in August at a work session that goes into a little more detail. So well, a lot of them are pretty extensive, and I wasn't expecting that we could do something quite that elaborate, but I wanted it to be something we can all be proud of. All right. We look forward to seeing what's possible and having those discussions. Right. Thank you, Ms. Bartlett. And we'll go back to the city manager for the city manager report. And I'll be pretty brief, just a few updates on various recruitments. So I, I can't remember if I mentioned this last time. We have made an offer to an HR manager candidate. Um, that person we expect to start uh, June 26th. So that's all in process. Um, at the same time, and that position would backfill uh, the current vacancy in, I believe, the assistant city manager spot. We've also made an offer for uh, to someone for a full-time finance assistant position that would backfill the vacant administrative assistant we have back here. The idea is, again, to keep growing our capacity in the finance department to work on budget tools. We had a great conversation today about um, maybe pivoting to emphasize some of the personnel budgeting modules because that intersects with quite a lot that's going on at the moment. So we're going to make sure we focus on that uh, coming forward over the next couple of months. And I'm hopeful to be uh, to be showing off some of that here in, uh, in, in August or at one of the work sessions coming up where we can show, start showing some of the pretty charts and graphs that uh, we'll be able to generate. So all that um, continues to be on course and in process. And finally, we I continue to work uh, with Mr. Horn and his firm on the fire chief recruitment. Um, and many thanks to uh, Chief Taylor, to um, Roger in the back, and to all the staff who we went out and took just tons of really good photographs. Um, so we were able to send them quite a few really pretty photos and graphics that they can use to help build out the brochure. I approved the verbiage for the draft um, narrative earlier this week. So they're assembling all that. I hope to have a draft of the actual brochure sometime next week, and then we'll move on to next steps as far as posting that to the professional associations and um, all the usual channels that we that we send those through. So I've heard just incidentally that other communities that have gone out for fire chiefs have had pretty decent applicant pools. Um, I expect based on how this process is unfolding that we will be competitive and hopefully we will attract some really good candidates. So full steam ahead on all that. And that's all I have. Questions for the manager. All right, he's getting off easy. Um, we'll move on to the next portion of our agenda. Madam Clerk, uh, have we had any requests to speak on any agenda items from any members of the public? No. All right. Well, if any pop up, you'll let us know. Yes. We'll move into old business then, and we have one ordinance that will have its second reading public hearing and potential adoption before we move into new business. So is there a motion for a second reading and final so adoption? <clears throat> Madam Clerk, would you please read this ordinance by title only? Ordinance 8230830. Oh, 830. An ordinance to make supplemental appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the city of Riverside 
state of Ohio for the period January 1 through December 31st, 2023. I will now open the public hearing for ordinance 23-0-830 at 626 p.m. If anyone wishes to comment on this ordinance, please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record and please keep your comments at three minutes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hearing no one and seeing no one come forward, we will close the public hearing for Ordinance 23-0-830 at 626 p.m. Is there any further discussion among members of council? Just a question. Um, so the, this is a total net of 192 additional expenditure from the general fund. Do we expect that that will run a deficit for the year? No, we've done uh, well enough at this point. What I can say is that um, based on the income tax, the income tax trends that we've experienced, um, I'm optimistic that we will continue to collect a little bit more than we budgeted for. Um, and so we will be able to, uh, the revenue that we're bringing in this year will help to cover some of these costs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If there's no other comments, then Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Denny? Yes. Mr. Joseph? Yes. Ms. Fry? Yes. Ms. Lomach? Yes. Mr. Maxfield? Yes. Mayor Williams? Yes. Motion carries. Moving into new business, we will have the first reading of Ordinance 23-0-831. Uh, Mr. Manager, this is the um, first reading for the consolidation of our property maintenance code. Is there anything else we need to include in that description? Nope, that's correct. Just it's the same thing that we discussed at the work session uh, last meeting. If you do have any any questions, uh, Ms. Holt is here and is able to help answer anything that comes up. Move to approve. Second. Okay, the city charter allows for the first reading of an ordinance to be read by title only unless a council member requests otherwise. Madam Clerk, would you please read this ordinance by title only? Ordinance number 230831, an ordinance to repeal and replace chapters 1331, 1341, and 1343 of the building code of the city of Riverside, Ohio. Is there any, any discussion for members of council? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Denny? Yes. Ms. Lomach? Yes. Ms. Fry? Yes. Mr. Joseph? Yes. Mr. Maxfield? Yes. Mayor Williams? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, we will now move into resolutions of which we have five. Um, resolution 23-R-2849. Mr. Manager, could you please um, give us any highlights of this that we need to know about? This is the annual sort of housekeeping resolution for streetlight assessments. So moved. Second. We have a motion for Mr. Denning and a second for Mr. Maxfield. All those in favor of resolution 23-R-2849 signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Uh, resolution 23-R-2850. Uh, Mr. Manager, is there anything about this that we need to know other than what's listed? No, it just it funds the annual crack shield program. Ms. Bartlett's available if you have questions about the program. All right. Do we have a motion? Motion. Second. We have a motion for Mr. Maxfield and a second for Mr. Joseph. All those of me, all those in favor of resolution 23-R-2850 signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Uh, next, we have resolution 23-R-2851. Uh, Mr. Manager, I believe you spoke about this at our work session. Correct, and no changes since the work session. It just authorizes us to proceed with fiber upgrades at the at the buildings um, and a, a bigger internet pipeline with uh, Spectrum Enterprise. Second. second. We have a motion from Mr. Denning and a second from Mr. Joseph. All those in favor, resolution 23-R-2851 signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Uh, resolution 23-R-2852. Um, Mr. Manager, we also have discussed this previously. This and the next resolution are um, updates to lease agreements for spaces in right point uh, as discussed at the last meeting. All right. So, so moved. Second. We have a motion for Mr. Denning and a second for Mr. Maxfield. All those in favor of resolution 23-R-2852 resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. And we also got a brief on the final resolution, 23-R-2853. We have a motion for Mr. Maxfield and a second for Mr. Joseph. All those in favor of resolution 23-R-2853 signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Um, 
Madam Clerk, have there been any requests to speak on any non-agenda items from members of the public with us this evening? There have not. Okay. Thank you for the update. We will move into council <clears throat> member comments, and I will start with Mr. Maxfield, our leadoff hitter. I have nothing. All right. Mr. Joseph. I got nothing. Um, I just have a uh, request for people to please join us on Saturday for the event at Roar Park that Project Riverside is putting on. And thank you to everyone who had a hand in a very uh, fun festival at St. Helens last weekend, including um, the city, which assisted in a number of ways, and all the patrons who made it a very successful event. Deputy Mayor. I was going to invite everybody Saturday as well. It's 10 invite them in 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock yeah. at Roar Park. Car, car show, stuff. food trucks, bouncy houses, Spider Man, <laughs> Spider Man advertised, and, the Spider Man. And thanks to the police department, those those events at the schools are wonderful. Sorry I couldn't make it last night. I was at a seven year old's baseball game. <laughs> Council Member Fry. Um, our next blood drive is um, June twenty fourth. Um, I believe that's a little more than a week from now. 26. Oh, is it the 26? Yes, ma'am. Um, yes. Yeah, so anyway, June 26 is right there. Um, and we have several openings right now. The um, community blood center is in urgent need of um, type O blood and um, I, I believe other types as well. Um, so if, if you have availability on that Monday, um, the blood drive is from three to seven um, would really like the community support. Absolutely. You know, and I will say in all the years that I've given blood, I never knew what happened to my blood. And I, you always wonder, you know, do they throw it in the trash can or now they send you an email when your blood gets moved to whatever facility, they don't tell you who, but I mean, you know, your blood has been used at Kettering Medical Center for our patients. I think that's a wonderful PR thing because you do when you're giving your blood, you wonder, well, wonder if yours was good enough. <laughs> and I have that O thing, so they like my blood. All right, and moving on to Mr. Denning. Um, since uh, we will have no meetings before the 4th of July, uh, I want to say happy 4th of July to everyone. I also want to say Just to everyone, um, be, um, Friendly with your neighbors, and if you're going to do fireworks, you know, 11 o'clock is probably late enough. We don't need to be out there shooting things off forever. Um, <clears throat> and um, because you know, it, there, our our uh, our pets are not as happy about the situation as we are, but um, but. Everybody has a right to celebrate the way they choose, and, and they, should, they, they should be able to. So um, be cognizant of your neighbors and, uh, and have a good time. And don't, please do not get hurt in the process. Um, there is also a music festival on the 23rd and 24th of, of uh, June at the Haunted House. So uh, there will be... <clears throat> 80s music on Friday night and country music on Saturday. So come on out uh, and uh, support the JCs. Absolutely. And thank you to the JCs. They have flags out right now for, yeah. for well, they're being collected tonight. They're being collected, but they, they were Depending out on the weather. <laughs> and it's it's wonderful to see how many people in the community have those flags out. And uh, it's a great month in our in our city for the number of festivals we have. And we're right in the middle of it. So We'll see everybody hopefully Saturday at Roar Park and then the following Friday and Saturday um, right at this at this location across the street to enjoy some music and support the JCs that do so many things to support this community. Mr. Well, and you want to know where they come from. Absolutely. And if you see the flags in our community, a number of people have them. The JCs uh, can they can if you connect with them, the Riverside JCs, they can make sure that you get a flag, too, and you'll be supporting I'll them. I'll some flyers at City Hall because I know some people have come in to ask about it. So I'll just make sure that there's some flyers here for that. Perfect. Perfect. And if I can, very quickly, just to follow up on that excellent point, um, the, we do follow the state law with respect to fireworks. The state law cutoff is 11 p.m. So right. that, yep, that is the timeline. It's um, not just a suggestion. Correct. Yeah, it is. That is the function. It's actually codified. Law. 
Um, and on a, and to build on another point there as well, um, our next scheduled meeting is July. Uh, we skipped the sixth, so the next meeting is uh, scheduled for July thirteenth. That would be a work session. Work session. And um, city hall offices will be closed Monday, the nineteenth of this month, in observance of Juneteenth. And then we are also closed on July four. So those are the closures that will happen between now and then. So thanks for the reminder. All right. And we'll wish all of our citizens happy holidays between now and then. There's two very important holidays we're celebrating on the 19th and the 4th. And we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a motion for Mr. Joseph and a second for Mr. Maxfield to adjourn at 6.30. I'm sorry. Yeah, 6.36 p.m. All those in favor, signify by saying aye.